Twenty-four percent team damage done. Nice. Okay. Might be some easy questions today. I think I get the feeling. Uh, to keep soldiers good aim, you should shoot in bursts. Very true. Uh, let me make sure the chat's visible. What practice drill can maintain my accurate shooting thirsts? Very nice, meow indeed. Very nice. Not forced at all. Not forced in the slightest. Um, honestly, drilling, I would say, is not the solution for burst. Like, if you want to practice burst firing, just play quick play and just make sure that you are constantly resetting your accuracy. Like, just play quick play with the pure intention. Pure intention of, like, every four shots, I'm going to let off the mouse button and then play on and just keep doing it and you'll probably find that there's times when it feels like your damage isn't quite high enough or people will get away because sometimes a little bit of spray isn't a bad thing sometimes a little bit of spray can make up for some hard movements and you know genji's doing flips all over the place and you just spray into him and eventually one of those bullets will hit um and so if genji's on like two hit points and he's just jumping around and you just spray at him you're probably gonna get him you're probably gonna get rid of him um but otherwise yeah like Quick play is a good place to practice it. There's no real hard drill, I'd say, that is worth doing other than just you could do Anna Headshot drills with Soul 76, no problem. It's just a little bit tricky. Does he jump too much? I actually didn't notice. I wasn't paying attention if he jumps or not. I don't think he was jumping around that much. Like, I saw that he was doing uh, good movement when he was running from the Genji. Is this it? So, this is the correct thing to do. The reason why you do this is like soldier when he's sprinting he has very like he has a, a bit of extra movement control and you can actually when you jump you stop sprinting and start sprinting and you like launch forward in the air it's kind of crazy um so when soldiers are running you'll see them do this where they'll wiggle like really intensely because they can still move away very quickly but they can also do it at high speed and you can change your speed on the fly it makes you very hard to hit no problem uh, so that was like good movement otherwise i didn't notice he jumped too much as long as you're behind the run up barrier jumping's not really a big deal um it's when like if you're fighting against a widowmaker don't jump crouch instead like crouch spam and fire at the widowmaker if you're behind a barrier it doesn't matter too much there was no real unnecessary peeking though um except for there was necessary peeking where the right heart just fucked up and yeah that was it, it, when i saw it it was just like yeah i've got to do this video because it was such a beautiful moment just one thing oh god Oh god. Skin away. <laughs> oh, oh god. Okay, good enough. I like it. I like it. I didn't realize that that would minimize that. Let's bring Twitch chat back. Whoop. So, moral of the story press E more. Yeah, just a bit more. A little bit more E, I'd say, is perfectly fine. You could probably be a little bit more adventurous with your positioning. Um, otherwise, it looked pretty good to me. Like, Ranking up for you is going to come down to very, very fine-tuning decisions and occasionally making the bold play. Like, our tactical visors didn't really pay off very much. Um, communication as well. Like, I want to emphasize that point again of just saying the occasional bit of information. Like, I have this or I'm going on Genji because then that might call the Reinhardt back and stop him chasing down a Genji that doesn't need to be chased down. Like, little things like that because then the Reinhardt pulls back and if he doesn't pull back and you say, I've got Genji, Reinhardt, go back to the front. And Reinhardt will go, oh, okay, and I'll go back to the front line. And that means that other people won't move in and won't be doing things. Very, very minor things that could have a, like a larger scale improvement throughout the game. It's the best way to not get hit. Jumping, crouching, AD spam. Uh, crouching is more useful than jumping. Don't jump. The reason why you don't jump is you lose speed and you lose control while you do it. Um... Like, and that's in terms of, like, if you are fighting a Widowmaker, this is how I'm thinking of it right now, if you are, like, are trying to pepper a Widowmaker and keep a Widowmaker suppressed, which is surprisingly easy to do, um, as long as you're feathering the shots correctly, then she has, like, a very limited amount of time she has to get some shots onto you, and you'll be healing during all that time, so she has to either headshot or body shot three times if you've got the healing field under you, because you'll heal up uh, a little bit of damage between shots, so, basically... The, the, at least from my own experience playing Widowmaker, the hardest time I have is when people basically do like the fucking crouch spam because that means I have to basically either try for body shots or hope that they crouch into one of my, uh, crouch into one of my shots because otherwise it's just too random. Um, but yeah, never jump versus Widow. Um, when you are running away from a threat though, that's when you want to jump and wiggle. Like, and just get around a corner as fast as you can. But otherwise, yeah, avoid jumping because it's just predictable. Uh, 76 on D.Va defense matrix. Did you just shoot or wait till she puts it down? Shoot her. Just shoot. Just, just keep shooting. 
Like the idea is you want to keep you want to force her to keep it up, and then when she drops it, you just fire a rocket and just slam her for a shitload of damage. You will have to reload at a certain point, but if you stop shooting, then she just puts the barrier down, then you shoot a shot, she puts the barrier up. You end up in a very slow stalemate. Also, by just shooting into it, it takes a long time for your clip to run out, and you deal a quite a high amount of damage. It takes a good couple of seconds for you to run out of ammo. Other people are also going to be shooting at D.Va. So by def burning her defense matrix down, you are then creating an opening for other people to do it. And it's just a very, very easy thing. Are you doing your job as soldier if you chase threats away but not get kills uh, and the cart advances, enemies stalled? Um, if the cart's not moving, like if the they're not moving or not moving into space, then yes. The one thing I would say is remember that any time you are away from the team, you are sacrificing a lot of pressure. Soldier 76 puts out a lot of pressure because he deals a lot of damage and he does a lot of reliable damage. So Reinhardt, for example, will struggle to push into Soldier 76 over a long period of time because he will just keep shelling out damage, 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 damage. And so Reinhardt has to make very quick, decisive pushes. If you can just slow grind forward when you're busy chasing something around that isn't actually a threat, no. Don't chase down Genjis too much. Don't trace down ch uh, tracers too much. Just fire enough shots to scare them away. They will run away. They are faster than you. You will not catch them. So just scare them off. Do a couple of times, scare them off, and then turn back and keep putting pressure on the Reinhardt or the enemy team's push. Because when you start pulling that pressure away, that's when the enemy team just really starts coming in hard, and then it doesn't matter that the payload's not moving. They're in position to win a team fight. They have position. They will get some ults down. They will win. And that's a problem. Why is there a comparison between Soldier and McCree? Only asking uh, this question for the video. Uh, okay, so basically they're both hitscan heroes. Um, hitscan gives you reliable damage. This is the bonus for hitscan. They are both very strong at medium range. The big difference between the two is that McCree is stronger at close range. Soldier is stronger at long range because Soldier uh, has less drop off in his weapon. His weapon is just better at long range because you're you know firing a lot of shots out, so you're more reliably dealing damage. You can also heal up while the enemy misses. Uh, McCree is better burst damage just because his headshots deal 140 damage. So uh, the way it works in our voice is like, let's say that we are this Genji. All right, this chap here. And let's say we bounce out and, you know, let's just discount rockets. And let's say that this soldier is nailed to the floor and can't move. Well, if soldier just body shots like five times, that's 100 damage. Genji just bounces back in and it's perfectly safe. If he headshots four times, that's 180 damage. But in that time, we might go, oh, shit, and we might bounce back in. We might be perfectly fine. If McCree headshots twice then that's it, the person's dead. You have no time to react to that. Like You get shot once, you think, oh, I'm on 130 hit points, and then you get headshot, and then you're just dead. That's why McCree is so dangerous at close range. That's why in the early days of Overwatch, McCree was very, very early on considered a lot stronger. Soldiers just did less damage overall, had less burst, and burst damage is very important in Overwatch because healing comes in very fast. So, yeah. Uh, that's why. That's, and then they're just reliable hit scan damage. Yeah, very similar in that regard. What would you recommend uh, as a healer if Soldier gets through into the back line? Um, if you're playing Ana, try and sleep the fucker. Basically, that's all you can do. As Zenyata, put a Discord on him. Like, in all cases, just try and get out of his firing line. Try and pull him into the team. Um, because then people need to shoot. Like, then people have an opportunity to shoot him. Just get out of the line of sight. Avoid, 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 avoid. Because he will win fights against you. Zenyata is the only one who could maybe win the fight against him. But the thing with Zenyata is Zenyata's hitbox is basically like head. Which is super dangerous and kind of easy to hit. And then just a big triangle. Like, this, this is what Zenyala looks like, guys. This is Zenyala's model. And it's so easy to just, like, pump damage here, and you will get some shots on his head, you'll get some head uh, shots on his body. You don't really have to worry about feathering shots because the spray is nicely, like, hitting all of this. So you have no issues just blowing him up. Uh, notice I didn't draw a penis. It's, let's be accurate. So this is Zenyala's head, and then he's got, like, a body here, and then he's got his legs, like that. There you go, that's Zenyala. Lol, 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 lol. Target priority for Soldier 76, uh, whatever you can shoot, basically. If some, So the way I run through it is this. If there is a vulnerable target, and then shoot the vulnerable target, there's no reason not to. You have reliable damage, so if someone is not standing behind a barrier, for example, just start shooting them. Force them to get behind the barrier again. You're basically, what you're doing is you're corralling the enemy team by doing that. You're saying you can't come out of the barrier because I will shoot you if you do, and that's bad, so get back into the barrier. Uh, then when they're all behind the barrier, you just shoot the barrier. 
Um, like I said, don't overchase. Just be careful with overchasing. If you can hit supports, hit supports. Otherwise, just keep drilling tanks. Remember, you have reliable damage. If the team is calling burn targets, stick with the burn target. Make sure you're focusing on focus targets because you have a big chunk of that damage. You should be focusing on the damage. You're not like a Genji who's adapting very fluidly to what's happening in the match. You're basically going, my team is focusing this. I should be helping with that. I'm a DPS support player. Who should I be playing this uh, season? Soldier is still very good. Soldier is very, very good. Uh, if you're playing support, Anna is still very, very good. Uh, Lucio kind of fits into the game, but if you're looking to climb, I'd say Lucio is always going to be a difficult one to climb on, unless you are very gifted. Um, yeah, I'd say all the supports are actually pretty solid right now. Mercy still a little bit weak, but if you're running Bastion, Mercy gets a lot more strength. Flashbang found the hammer or headshot against Soldier. Uh, found the hammer. If you have six bullets, fan the hammer. Don't headshot. Uh, by headshotting, he has an opportunity, like, unless he's taken damage before, it will take more than one headshot to finish him off. So then the soldier has an opportunity to rocket you, like what happened um, on the defense over here could happen. I think it was about this moment. And basically, like, this could happen. Just the moment. Yeah. The McCree comes in, and there's an opportunity here for Soldier to blow himself up. So that can happen. Um, and then Soldier just takes you down with... And that's not good. You don't want that to happen. So yeah, just found the hammer. Like, you've got to have uh, all six bullets, probably, especially if you've got a stealing field, but otherwise, yeah. Ugh. A soldier is best when he has moments to find high grounds. When is the best moment to stay behind Reinhardt's shield? What should I consider before choosing one or the other? What can deal with you is the biggest question. Like, what, what can stop you getting on the high ground? If they have a Widowmaker, then for the love of God, just stay behind the barrier. You are very powerful there. You, you, know, you, you bring healing to the team. You can deal a lot of damage from that position. It's perfectly fine. If they have, in this case, like they had with this team, they have, like, um, Reinhardt, Zarya, Diva, May. Zenyatta and Anna, I think it was the team lineup. It was something ridiculous like that. The only thing that could come up and deal with you is Diva, and Diva's not that good at it. Diva's not that good against Soldier. So there's nothing to stop you just running around doing what you want. There's nothing that can really get rid of you, dislodge you very easily from that high ground position. So you might as well take it. You've got the opportunity to do it, so let's let's go and do it. Um but yeah, just look for opportunities. If you can set up at what's called a crossfire, actually that's like a really good topic. Let's go to the screen. Uh, because it's very neutral. Okay, crossfire. Crossfire is a very important concept to Soldier 76, and you want to always try and set one up if you can. The idea of crossfire is let's take the tunnel area. Uh, let's take Watch Point Gibraltar's sort of first point. So, let's go yellow. I'm going to try and muster all the artistic skills I have here. Okay. So we have the, um, the payload area. But this is where the payload has to get to, right? In Watch Point Gibraltar. You've got, like, this... Area above, this balcony above, that you can get set up on. You've got the area down, like, across here. That you can fight over, and you've got the area over here. And so on, so on. You've got the server room over this way. Okay, this is Watchpoint Gibraltar. In a, in a nutshell, this is Watchpoint Gibraltar. Hopefully this, this is somewhat clear. Um, and then we've got, like, the tunnel down below here. Okay? What a crossfire is, is, let's say you get really fancy. You're feeling super, super fancy, and so you like get a good push up here, and you decide to actually go around, and you actually get up here. Most of the threat is coming from this direction. So, let's say they have a Reinhardt barrier. Fuck. Let's say they have a Reinhardt barrier. Uh, just imagine it's still there. You guys can probably manage that. Most of the threat is coming from this way. If you're over this way, then the Reinhardt can't do anything. They can't protect from anything. You've got damage coming from two directions. The same logic applies on defense, by the way. When they start coming around here, uh, coming around the corner, if you have people in the server room and you on the high ground, where can they defend? You are raining damage from one side and you have free fire on one side and then they have free, the rest of your team has free fire on the other. And so they're in, a, like a, in this big clusterfuck of an area here. Crossfiring is very, very important to be able to do. Just make sure that when you are doing it, they can't just like snipe you because that can happen. Um, be on the lookout for opportunities for it, though. That, so when we were in the hangar, in the shuttle area earlier on, um, like this is the shuttle, this is the bridge, the payload end is like over here, close enough. 
and then you got like this area up here which leads to their spawn so they're coming from this way like we were up here and then for some reason we decided to drop down we had the perfect opportunity to run through and set up a crossfire here so we would be up on the high ground here nothing could really deal with us and our team will be pushing in this way suddenly they have nowhere to hide nowhere safe and then soldier just kills everything or your team they turn around they put the barrier towards you and then soldier just kills everything like you have really good setup opportunities so crossfiring is going to be very important um just be careful that you're not going to get caught off like once deaths start happening you got to be aware of like people coming from their spawn and then just don't get caught out and die when it starts the fight starts fragmenting that's when you start pulling back i'm playing a lot more soldier in season four my main issue is killing genjis when they fully commit to diving on you any tips bait the deflect so what genjis will often do is they'll take a little bit of damage then they'll deflect and then they'll either run or they'll fully commit um just shoot 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 take a bit of damage when genji starts deflecting if you put down the heal field he's not doing damage to you you're healing up you just sort of stand there you have a little bit of a cigarette and you just go whatever and then you just shoot him and kill him um be very careful with your rockets if you think that you are losing the fight but he is low don't be afraid to rocket your feet and just take you both out because it's better than just you dying um and yeah just practice basically genji spoiler spoiler alert genji's going to double jump uh, that's also one piece of advice I'll give you. Genji's always double jump, so he's going to be trying to jump over you, so just keep that in mind. Didn't make it yesterday, so I'm sure you talked about this at some point already, but what do you think of Bastion and his potential nurse on the PDR? Those are actually on live now. Uh, Bastion's nerf is on live. So yeah, it doesn't really matter what I think. That's run through already. Uh, I'm in favor of it. They've put, uh, so now Ironclad is 20%, and now there is a cap on damage reduction up to 50%, so Nano Boost doesn't stack with it anymore. Good changes. It just means Bastion is mortal. What flavor of ice cream is cool, dude? TM? Um, I don't know. Cold flavor. Wait, it's ice cream. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I think chat's better at coming up with ice cream flavors than I am. How do I deal with an enemy soldier as Reaper? You've just got to, like, it's, it's easy to break this down because it's very simple to, like, look at Reaper. What range can Reaper kill things at? close range what range can soldier kill things at medium and long range and close range to some degree but he's not as strong as reaper there so how do you kill soldier as reaper you get into close range and then you kill him um but it's getting to that close range and that's always going to be the hard part because you're not going to have many opportunities the answer is enemy soldier is going to have an advantage unless you can close into him if you can't close into him you're going to have problems soldier is not your problem as reaper tanks are your problem as reaper uh the genji trying to dive into your back line is your problem as reaper for example you can make their life very difficult um if you are very very careful or very very aware of your positioning and very careful not to shoot into his deflect you sure you won't get banned by twitch for drawing too many penises i'm pretty confident i'm pretty confident i've seen like people streaming conan exiles or whatever that game is called and, like teabagging with big floppy dicks into each other's faces i'm sure twitch can manage of colored talking about penises as usual uh what do you think orissa will be in the meta uh do you think she'll be a main or off tank uh i think she has potential to main tank like this isn't a good place to really talk about orissa too much and we're probably going to play on ptr as well because i'm tired today i'm feeling lazy tomorrow we'll, let's do a bunch of ranked though um but i think orissa has potential to main tank it's just it... <sighs> Like people say, oh my god, her barriers, like, let me get this rant out of the way here. I'm going to do this rant in a million and one places so that people hear it. 900 hit point barrier, right? And people go, oh, well, Reinhardt's is 2000, so it's better. Not true. The reason why Arissa's barrier is really good is because it's on a 12 freaking second cooldown. So you put down a barrier, and if you put it down early, and then move, and then, like, the enemy team attacks into you, you can put down another barrier immediately after it goes down. That's an 1800 barrier. The thing with Orisa is her barriers constantly refresh. Every 12 seconds you get 900 barrier. And you can fire and you can fight while doing that. And you can reposition people. You are active in the fight while using a barrier. Reinhardt is not active in a fight while using a barrier. He has 2,000 uh, hit point barrier that decays and degrades and degrades and degrades and degrades. Most Reinhardt barriers linger at about 1,000 to 1,200 hit points until they get bursted down or shredded down. Um, so the difference isn't actually that huge in my mind. Orissa also makes it very hard for Reinhardt to charge. You can't charge into an enemy Orissa because if she just saves Harden or saves Fortify, you charge into her, you get stunned. You just get completely fucked. So you can't do that anymore. That changes how you're going to play. It, it's, it influences things. So Orissa is complicated in terms of how she's going to fit in. She has a lot of potential though. And I think she can work as like that anchor tank. Definitely think she can work as the anchor tank. 
All right, so what are we doing? There we go. People are calling out the penis. Not a question, but more of a tip for the soldier in the video. He can ca uh, cancel animation start of his visor by dropping a heal station right next to the visor. There you go. So if you activate visor, so let me make sure I understand this correctly, Artie, because I generally do this anyway, just out of force of habit, because you want to be visoring on top of a healing field just to survive it. Um, so you activate visor and then you just biotic field immediately and it cancels the animation. I imagine that's how that works. Hopefully that's pretty cool. Arty is a soldier main, by the way. He plays a very good soldier. I watched some of these six stack uh, videos you guys sent in. Arty was a beast. The cool dude ice cream uh, is clearly mint, just a cool flavor. I don't know, but he's not green. Mint's green. If you have a hopeless hit scan, fire is devastating. How can you work around the subpar DPS? Pick another hit scan, <laughs> basically, or pick something else to counter the fire, like and give him some support in countering the fire. It's just it just sucks when that happens. Basically, that means that their fire is good enough where you have to focus more resources on it and then deal with that. Otherwise, I think that's about it. Other way around, E first, then Q. Okay, there you go. So, healing field, Q. Oh, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. Okay, so you can, you're cancelling the healing field. Or just, like, minimising the time that you're not firing, I guess. That makes sense. Uh, when Visor, Nano, or not, do you ask anti heal boost you or anti uh, anti heal the enemy team? Anti healing the enemy team is always better. If if she can land the anti like anti healing is a big other discussion to be honest. Anti healing is always better than heal boost because anti healing is like an absolute you cannot heal anymore. Heal boost is well not always better I guess. I got to be careful with my absolutes. It's better like ninety percent of the time because they just cannot heal. They cannot stop the damage coming through. They can't prevent that transcendence doesn't work for example anymore. You just kill everything. So, anti heal is going to work better. Just a general tip as well, when you're playing Soldier 76, uh, just link up with your Ana, talk to your Ana, say, uh, you know, I will ask for nano boost as well, it's always a good sign, and make sure that when you're ulting, Ana has a good line of sight on you. It's always a good tip. Uh, as Ana, you can get shot on her when she peeks. Yeah, Ana, like, Ana can definitely help out with the fire as well. If you focus on making sure that supports are still alive, then as Ana, you can definitely scare fire as easily. I'm a terrible hit scan player, the only advantage I have is I'm not in denial about my abilities. Step 1. Practice. Get better at hit scan so you can beat Pharaohs up a bit, or at least put pressure on them to make sure that they're scared. Like, that's what you want out of your hit scan, is to make sure that the, the Pharaoh is scared off. Step 2. If a Pharaoh is demolishing you, you're playing a hit scan and you don't think you're up for it, tell your team. Just say, guys, I don't think I'm doing good enough, can we swap? Can someone swap with me? People will do it. And then you swap off, and then you change up what you do. Uh, uh, yeah, like, this, this is one of the things, uh, I have a video about AIM that I've been really lazy in setting up because I've been busy the last couple of weeks anyway, uh, but I need to put it out because the one key thing I want people to take away with AIM is that you don't have to be a fucking god, you don't have to be Taimu, you don't have to be fucking too easy, nailing every shot, you don't have to be goddamn Soldier 76 with his visor on hitting every single shot, you just have to be better than the other guy, that's all you have to do, you have to beat the other guy and the other guy's probably at a similar level to you, so just a little bit of practice, a little bit of improvement and you will be shocked how much more you will grow. That simple. It is that simple. So 76 is clearly a sweet Madagascan vanilla with lashings of oak aged bourbon, smooth, mature, and well aged. Straightforward, clean, but distinct. Thoughts? It's a very fancy ice cream for Soldier 76. He seems more rough and tumble than that. That seems very, um, very classy. And I don't think Jack Morrison is a classy dude. I think he's I think he's somewhat refined. He's got you know, he's composed, but he's not like fancy. Anyway, 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 uh, that probably wraps it up for Coaching the Money. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you to our wonderful, wonderful man, which is, was it DJ Head? DJ, oh God, you're not, you're not a sub, so I don't know your name. Uh, but the sending it in was appreciated. It was good to have you on board. And I'm glad that you're in chat. I'm glad you've taken this all in your stride. It's all, uh, there you go. Yeah, DJ Thed. Sorry, there you go, DJ Thed. Oh, close enough, close enough. Rocky Road, the thing is, like, you could say that uh, either Roadhog is Rocky Road, McCree could be Rocky Road, like, that's more, they're, like, McCree's more American, basically, like, more American stereotype, and then Roadhog's more like Rocky Road, it makes sense, because he's Roadhog. You get it? Anyway, yeah, start saying bye, YouTube. Thank you guys for watching to the end of Coaching the Many. This isn't the end of the stream, of course, we will 
go and do some PTI. If you want to send footage into Coaching the Many, send it into oemreviews at gmail.com. Include the hero name and the rank the game was played in the description. Also, if you're a Twitch sub or not, include a link to your recording of the game. You have to record it yourself. There's no replay feature in no voice, so whatever. And yeah. Uh, I think that's about everything you need to include in that. And just put a description in the thing as well. Um... But yeah, that's about it. Make sure you come by and watch it live. The show is a little bit better live than on YouTube, I imagine, uh, just judging by viewership and stuff like that. So definitely come by live, say hello. We're all very friendly. We'll answer some questions. Uh, you're still not doing any, uh Worth sending in some mana footage. Like, send in some mana footage, Tom, uh, from probably your placements this season will be best. Worth doing now, because now's about the time when we can do another Anna. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's it from me. That's it from Twitch chat. Bye! Actually, let's do it properly. Tools.